Welcome to Pride Ed Summit 2021. My name is Shombit. I work as Senior Program Manager for Pride Circle and take care of Pride Circle's initiative known as Rainbow Bazaar, an online marketplace exclusive for queerpreneurs. Today uh, in the panel, we have Pujita, owner of or control, and, uh, control Plus P, and Laksha, owner for Sasset Stickers. So let's hear from them. And in this uh, conversation, we are going to further understand what has been their journey in their entrepreneurial uh, uh, beginning. So uh, starting with uh, Pujita, Pujita, why don't you uh, begin with introducing yourself and talking a little bit about Control Plus P. Sure. Thank you, Sombat. Uh, hi, I'm Pujita and I'm the founder and the person behind Control Plus P. Uh, uh, we make all kinds of stuff from features, uh, stationery, front on badges, such as fried foods, and everything is made and designed locally. So we try to uh, get in touch with a local manufacturer because that's a easier way to do. And uh, we do that. We started it, uh, in the end of 2020 and it's growing and we are growing stronger. So. Okay, that's that's really nice to know. Um, Laksha, what about Sasset Stickers? How did Sasset Stickers start? Thank you, Shambhat. Uh, so I am Laksha. My pronouns are she, her. And I am the uh, co-founder of Sasset Stickers. Sasset Stickers was an initiative that started by myself and my friend Nakul. Uh, so we are a small business based out of Bangalore. We sell stickers based around the themes of mental health awareness, LGBTQIA plus awareness and like this other stuff that we find cool. Uh, so we started... Uh, in the month of March in 2021, we are also a pandemic baby business. I think most of us sort of started in the pandemic. So I think the pandemic sort of uh, gave us that push to start our business. Okay. So um, as you said, pandemic kind of gave uh, this this uh, push to start the business. But ideally, pandemic has hit every business. So how mm. is it that it worked in your favor? If you could just tell us a little bit about that. Hmm. Okay, so I'll go first. So I think the reason I sort of started was because of the pandemic, because I think like if the pandemic wasn't there, we wouldn't have had the time to sort of, you know, sit and brainstorm and all of that. So I think the pandemic gave us this time to you know, explore this creative side of us, which I never knew I had. I have zero creative background. Uh, I am a psychology student. So like, you know, I am fully into like academics. So like when I met my friend Nakul, I sort of like realized that you know, this, can something, this could be something that I could do on my own. So I think the pandemic gave me that time to figure out what I like liked as a passion to do. Uh, but yeah, the pandemic has affected, you know, how I you know, run my business. You know, it, it was a little hard to you know, ship my deliveries and get like all my stuff printed. So there were like a few challenges, but we did overcome that. And like, here we are. So, so yeah. It worked like okay. pro and con, they were both. <laughs> so, so, so clearly that pandemic kind of pushed you to start the business, but whereas you faced a little bit of logistical issues because yeah. of the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. So fair, fair enough. So with that, let's move on to Pujita. Pujita, how has your journey been during this pandemic? Yes, I would uh, say that COVID has definitely impacted our business. And uh, yeah, the main reason I have started Control this is because I lost my job in hospitality because I was graduating through 2020 and there were no scope, there's no scope for tourism or hospitality, within, especially in the pandemic, right? So yeah, uh, I took a break and then I started brainstorming. I had a few hobbies where I explored my creative side as well. And yeah, and then I thought, okay, maybe this will be a good idea too. Now, so that's how I started. All right. So um, this this brings me with another question, and that's like um, we it, it, like it's it's not official claims, but there are uh, uh, wordings that's going around stating that the pandemic is, is is going to end next year. So with that, do you see any any changes that has happened in your business uh, than than last year? Yep. Laksha, if you I, want to uh, talk about such stickers. Um, 
so yeah i mean technically like everything is going back offline now you know i study right now so my college was online so i had like you know time i didn't have to travel back and forth to college so i had that extra sort of like the time that i used to travel to you know put into my business and that's basically how i was running my business even through like it was always a part time thing and i think it will for it will be a part time thing for like a long time but now with you know everything going offline and you know going back to like the normal uh whatever that is you want to define it as uh it it does affect it will affect my business you know um with the number of orders i'll be able to ship and like you know how fast i'll be able to ship it and i think at the end of the day is the customers also understand that you know like small businesses sort of have like other things to do as well and it's always like one or two people manning it you know in the back and it's not like a like a corporation like amazon or something where you know they they ship orders like in one or two days and we cannot do that as a small business so i think you know people have to be like more mindful when they're ordering from small businesses understanding that you know we also have like other commitments in our lives and i think the patience sort of will have to you know develop with people so so uh, you mean to say that the orders will spike up numbers will spike up so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's all positivity with with the pandemic coming to yes, an end yes 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 and Fair also enough. like and also like we can start like you know putting up stalls like in flea markets and like right. that's something i'm looking forward to because i would consider myself an extrovert and like you know i want to meet people and i think uh, my aim is to build a community and you know meet new people who like my stickers and it's not just you no know, me selling my stickers it's like you no know, what those mean to those people so i think i'm super excited you know to you know for offline sales as well not just online website and other stuff right i think i think that that uh, gives me a sense that you have some stories to share where uh, you know you have connected with people for yes, just yes. more than stickers so i think just uh, holding on to that let's let's hear from pujita uh, what is it about uh, pujita uh, uh, and control plus p when it comes to uh, open market opening up and pandemic coming to an end yeah definitely i can see a lot of changes coming for control first be within the next three months and i i decided to end my gap year and pursue my master soon so that and managing control plus b and masters would like take time but i think we all can able to do it so yes. that uh, yeah and uh, and also i'm very looking forward to meet people and also exhibit in free markets and see yeah, if that's the goal to right have a community and share what you create with them and seeing them face to face does make us even more happier than the online one so yeah i think that's <laughs> the thing hopefully we could do yeah because right. i feel like you know, a lot of people dm us you know after they receive our products and we share their reviews but while that is very like satisfying i feel like you no know, them buying it from us and you know like them admiring it like in the stall and like looking that that would be like a different experience that i'm looking forward to look like you know being yep. so I'm you mean to say that so you mean to say that in person in person sharing feedback is going to be uh, more sensitive to you and imperative to you than than receiving a dm is that what you're trying to say i'm not saying it's going to be more it's the same feeling but it's just something new that i really want to experience because like i think that since we started right. it's only been like you know online online i think that right. offline it would be like nice for you know to push me to do better stuff but but i think uh, like as we are all talking about online i think online is the key right like when it yeah, comes yeah, to yeah. marketing like yeah. when it comes to marketing today and we know that how important marketing is for any business so mm -hmm. is is online not the key there what has been your marketing challenges or experiences throughout since you started if you have to sum sum it up so uh, uh, pujita what what would be your experience starting uh, from the beginning when it comes to marketing marketing was one of the most challenging thing to do right and uh, finding the right customers through social media is very hard and you know being a queer on business selling subtle pride merch you need to have a specific like our community and allies to reach and like us to be visible to them so it was quite challenging in the starting because i didn't know how to like reach out <laughs> to uh, our like our community but eventually we found few organizations and pride circle which helped us reaching <laughs> our ideal 
community of customers and also yeah and uh, yeah our content creation is one of another challenge i have faced you yeah, uh, being an introvert instagram algorithm needs to you to be in your profile right so yeah. and eventually you yeah, i got out of my comfort zone and started doing that as well so it's been right <laughs> yeah a good journey for me right so basically your journey has been uh both a uh, little challenging and easy as well like at some, at at certain points where you have felt it's it's a cake walk and probably at times where you felt that it's it's little um uh, hilly uh, sort but i think that's that's the beauty of business there's ups and downs always so with that let's let's hear it from laksha laksha what do you have to say when marketing comes into the picture okay so so yeah so for me i think uh, Online was the only way that I could sort of start because, like, all of us are like Gen Z. We're always on. Not all of us, but some of us. Most of us are on Instagram, and I think that's sort of where you know most small businesses start. So you know that's where I was like, you know, there was a logical way for me to start, and because like I this plan of starting this business was there for me since twenty twenty end of twenty twenty. So I was like, no, I I was like, I have to make make it perfect, make make it perfect. But then I realized that if I keep doing that, nobody's gonna see my stuff. So the only way to sort of start was to just put my stuff out there, make that Instagram account. So I did that, and then I was like, okay, now I have to start making. You know, I have to start putting out my stickers. so like yeah then i did that and then once that was done i was like okay i have to get more people to see this so i had to like ask friends and like you know like acquaintances and like you know, tell them can you please share my products and most people were very kind they you know shared my products and sort of the people started coming in you know far so it started with friends and it was going out you know as it should and then uh, it was a it's challenging at first because you know i was like okay it's, it's starting small it's starting small but then as i was you know i had to like scale up i was realizing that you know i have to uh, work with the instagram algorithm obviously so like i had to start making reels and while i wasn't very comfortable with the video format i had to adapt quickly so it was a lot of trial and error you know getting a tripod trying to fix that tripod and trying to get myself comfortable in front of the camera you know to make to like do those goofy dances with my stickers but then at the end of the day i sort of realized that you know people are going to see my stickers through me doing goofy dancing i think it's worth it i mean i sort of like put all of my shame and all of my pride to the background and just like do it for my business and that's that was one of the challenges you know getting used to reels and understanding how it works and you know but it did really help us because like you know obviously a lot of people discovered us and they they wanted to buy our stuff so it it was like a win win but like i had to get used to it and another challenge was hmm, i would say like finding my audience as poojita added you know at first you don't know like a lot of people just dm you you don't know like if they actually want to buy it or like you know you don't know the intention because you're like doing it through the dms but sort of figuring people's intentions out you know getting ghosted by a lot of customers and for someone who's like you know because it's our product we like we want people to buy it because they're asking us we're like oh they're going to buy it and that expectation sometimes sort of like goes so i think that was one more thing just getting used like the you know, people not everybody is going to buy your stuff and that's that's okay so that, that was one more challenge and also like taking care of my mental health while doing all of this you know to make sure that you know i don't get too carried away because at the end of the day it's something that i i love to do i shouldn't start hating to do it just because of all of the hustle and bustle you know i want to get more orders so i can't you know sacrifice my mental health for the sake of that and so as a as a company as a sticker shop who's selling uh, stickers on mental health awareness i think i should practice that first so i think that was another challenge but i'm working on it and i think i'm doing pretty good and i would say i wouldn't call it a challenge but i would think a lot of organizations during the pride month really supported us sort of you know shared our our stuff on on their reels on on um, what are guides and just like stuff like giving us that push you know getting like because they have like a wider audience so getting those eyes on our brand so i think a lot of brands were like you know super positive like pride circle was probably the one of the first organization that approached us like i think two days before the pride month started and they were like you no know, we want to do this we want to do that like they were so like supportive and it just felt so nice you know, someone like approaching us so yeah even with all of the challenges i feel like we have a lot of support from you know queer organizations for queer businesses so i think that really helped 
so <clears throat> okay so thank you so much for for um, all your support to pride circle so with that for everybody's reference here pride circle has an online marketplace a platform for lgbt plus sellers called rainbow bazaar the platform comes absolutely free to all sellers uh, with no listing or commission commission fee at all um, so if anybody who has an idea and wants to start a business right circle rainbow bazaar supports them in getting their business online and flying uh with that uh moving on to laksha i think you had good experiences from your customers i mean both positive and negative just customers who were kind of giving feedback after the product or dming and then never coming back to i think you have sold something more than stickers so would really want to know that what what is the experience that you have uh, received from your customers which is beyond the stickers I think the word customers like makes me feel a little weird because like all of the people who have bought stuff from me, I have somehow at the end of they become like an acquaintance or a friend who I still try to stay in touch with. You know, they always come back. You know, for the second time they're like, you know, I like the stickers. I want to get something right. else, and they're like, you know, my friend's birthday is coming up. Can you like, you know, send this to them? And they're always like, I told my friend about your business. And it's, since it's mostly people our age, are the people who sort of buy from my store are people of my age. It's it's really nice because it's more than just like customers i would say it's they've been they become like a part of like the sasage family like and it was i didn't really think that that would happen because like when starting a business you just like you know i have to like that's the selling the stickers was the first priority but now it was like you know it's just like being patient and like you know people who want to buy will buy so i have this very one interesting story which happened like a week back so one of the one of my customers she's from udupi so she bought like few of the pride stickers during the pride month she discovered us from one of the guides and she bought us and bought from us and she's been in touch with me like you know all, like three to four of her friends have been like you know they've been very close to me they like share all my stuff without me asking like when i put out new stuff they're always hyping me up and for someone who just bought like my stickers once it just it feels so nice you know when people sort of do that with my all of my products and they and uh, i got to go to udupi for like a family vacation and i got to meet her and since i was like uh you know yeah, i am in udupi do you want to catch up and she said yeah sure and for someone who is just selling stickers that was something that like meeting an online friend was something very big so i went and met her and we were like having a conversation we were talking about you know how it like how it's like to be queer and about the queer community in udupi and how it is and we were just talking about stuff in general and then she just told me the story she was like you know i was carrying my laptop to class and like you know, someone saw my pride ka sticker and they were like where did you get it from and uh, she was like no i got it from this place and uh, that person was like oh my god that's so nice and she always tells me that you know she looks at the sticker when she's working she you know she feels so affirmed about her sexuality and that just i was like i am just selling stickers and this this sort of positive response i didn't know how to reply to her i was like that's so sweet you know that you know this my sticker sort of gave you that you know it reaffirmed you know what you what you are feeling and you know that it reaffirmed your identity and i feel so you know glad that i was able to be a part of you know your you know coming out or whatever so it just felt really nice and you know if i it started as was just like a hobby it's it's somewhere where you know i wanted to be and i was so glad you know we're sort of building this tiny community and i just feel very proud so i think i think that's that's even the motto of pride circle is that we try to uh, foster the community and we try to build a community uh, in its true sense and bigger sense we try to empower so i think that's that's what even you are doing in your in your in your business is yeah. that you're trying to build a community you're trying to get the queer people together and then and grow all all uh, together so with that pujita do you have any such experience that you would want to share with us yes i do somewhere <laughs> so you yeah, this is one of the best thing that like one of the memorable stories in my life so uh back in december we had i live in a pretty small city which is in andhra pradesh in vijayawada so i am unable to like it's not easy to find another queer person from here because they don't have any uh, community or organization so uh, we we were able to put up a, a stall in a flea market and uh, we just had one uh, pride product at that time which was our uh, pride journal right and 
like i didn't know like if people would understand what it is or something because yep uh, i never felt like an insider here so i don't know i, I just didn't know that people would actually be sub- the supportive in my city so uh, yep and people came up and they started having conversations on the pride journal which we had about me and uh, like which we had in our stall and yep it was like and the, they just say that oh it's pretty empowering to have this right and having a conversation with them like few like four or five people having conversations with them in vijayawada seemed so surreal to me and i was just so happy that okay maybe i'm doing something meaningful and yeah and yeah all like i felt more motivated and excited to make and create new yeah. product so it's more than a product right it's a lot of absolutely good. Yep. absolutely it's 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 just not the product there there are a lot attached to a product i mean even if you are making a product you're making with your heart so yeah. you you're, you're giving a lot so it's just not a product that's reaching the end customer it's something beyond the product so with that i and have something else you know, yeah and also with that product i was able to make fellow queer friends in my hometown and <laughs> which is even <laughs> right right yeah, yeah. yeah so so again you're creating like a small community you're getting the community people together so that's that's again the motto of pride circle where we try to empower the community bring it closer and and then uh, uh grow together that's what we call so uh um, with that i have another question in mind and that's that's like there's there's a there's a cliche that's like uh, when it comes to the the lgbt plus community it's it's all about fashion and makeup but you're doing something beyond fashion and makeup what is your uh, take on this uh, pujita if you want to answer this first yeah uh, we are people are everywhere and we are more into fashion or makeup previously but the trends are changing now yeah of course to that i always say that uh, of course i mean poor queer people uh, did, i mean did a lot staying in the closet for all this while so the yeah. best they could and do finally, is like they, they know how to dress oh, staying in the closet they learned that that's clever this joke <laughs> yep <laughs> that's actually very funny uh, yep and now yes we are out so we are able to do other stuff <laughs> uh, yep uh, and yeah definitely i can see queer people being everywhere in every sector as possible and i i think we are, we were everywhere before it's now that uh, we are empowered and privileged to come out and be proud of it and we yeah, are definitely uh, we are in art music and yeah anyway <laughs> you can find we are everywhere and you yeah, uh, i have a goal that uh, we need to uh, create more products regardless of which category it is everything is made in india as a manufacturing sector in india is very good as well we just need to identify that and create more right right uh, so lacha what do you think about this okay, you, so- even you are out of fashion and makeup so you are you are doing uh, stickers which is very innovative so what do you have to take to talk about this i mean um, i guess like that's probably just a stereotype that sort of been perpetuated about queer people but yeah i think more as uh, pujita said that you know a lot of queer people have been in spaces creating other stuff but they just haven't had that safe space you know to be out and you know right. be open about their sexuality and their identity so maybe it was just like because makeup and that was something that was considered queer you know back in like few years ago so maybe that's probably why you know back then it was like popular but now uh, i guess that you know it's more than just being queer i think it's like do what you want to do you know it's like whatever you feel there's like you know what you wherever your heart is just you no know, follow that and do it if it's in makeup if it's like in you know fashion that's that's good and if it's like in art and it's like everything at the end of the day everything is a form of self expression and whatever way it comes it it does and that's that's the crux of it yeah right so um so um we we all spoke about the community we all spoke about 
building a community together uh, what do you think uh, or, or why do you think rather it is important to collaborate within the community like as as we are talking about community as we are talking about growing together uh, wh- why do you think it is so important that we should collaborate within the community what wh- what do you what do you can foresee out of this such collaborations pujit if you want to start yes sure uh, collaborations if we done it right it's always a win win for all of us right mm-hmm. so definitely collaborations are very powerful within our community and it also support an artist who are business and able to take them to new reach maybe like it helps both of like any people collaborating uh, to spread and uh, have a wider audience right and right. yeah definitely a meaningful collaboration would be very important and i can see that happening so let's be too i'm still learning so <laughs> let's right so um i mean a uh, fair fair thing like collaborations are always win win i mean if done right they always win win so yeah. with that and and that's where we have collaborated or rather you have collaborated with pride circle and rainbow oh, yeah. bazaar and rainbow bazaar yeah. is trying to uh, support as much as possible to help uh, queer businesses in the country so uh, with that laksha what do you think about collaborations within the community like we have influencers we have uh, quite a lot of faces and yes, yes. popular names around the community so how do you think such collaborations will uh, help you and your business hmm. So this Sassy Stickers was a collaboration with me and my friend. Both of us are queer. So when we started it, we when I wanted to make like pride stickers, both of our experiences of being queer was different. So that itself was a collaboration. You know, we sort of came to a middle ground. We're like, no, this is what my experience or this is what your experience was, and we sort of started from there. So like again, collaborating with influencers, collaborating with organizations. I think one is obviously going to strengthen what I stand for. That is, you know. lgbtq i awareness and like you no know, this uh, you know putting my stuff out there and for more people to see it at the end of the day the collaborations are really good when it's done well and it's done out of good intentions so then good right. intention and being mindful is very important so if you if that's there then your yeah, collaboration will definitely work it'll help me sort of you know reach out to new people like you know for talk to people and build a community there as well because now i get to ex- uh, talk to more queer people and you know get to know their experiences and that can sort of inspire my products as well you know just to understand right. you know what other queer people want and if i can sort of help them in some way and my stickers can help them out in some way i would definitely love to you know, add to that of course so i think um Uh, i mean we say that actions speak more than uh, words but i think these, these stickers are doing the job as you said that stickers with stickers you are able to pass on a message and 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 get uh, into that larger space so i think that that's a huge thing so with that um, the next next question that i have is that uh, do you think that uh, there is a need in 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 the current industry uh, for Uh, some specific grants or accelerator programs for uh, lgbt plus businesses like you said that you started um, all from the scratch and at that point in time if you probably had um, people or uh, i mean incubators or accelerators who would help you develop your business or or or, or help you start uh, would that uh, have been helpful or or how how would that uh, have benefited you if you if you want to touch on that lasha uh, what do you think i mean you 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 had a business partner but still um how would an incubator or accelerator helping lgbt plus businesses will will work yes i think it would have been a little easier like the process of me understanding maybe not like grants or funds but like you know general resources on you know how to start a business and you know how to the, the how to so you know just like getting your foot into you know this whole world of you know the documentations yeah, like maybe yeah. the documentation bit. yeah like how to like, set up a website like a like a question maybe uh, everyone would have do i need a gst or i don't yeah yeah so that's something that i had to figure out by myself after doing a lot of google and obviously i didn't get to learn about all of that in college 
uh so right. um you know stuff like that maybe uh because like for my for myself i would say because i was like you know speaker business it's not something that i i guess would be funded from you know for from someone outside because like it's some it's like a, it sounds like a hobby so i think that was something i was okay funding myself but you know i just like for me i think the resources on how to you know build your brand and how to market it you know online marketing stuff like that some resources on understanding how to do it would have been very helpful and i think that would help a lot of other queer entrepreneurs as well you know just the resources on where to start and once you sort of understand and you know the ground level and how to make a business plan because that was something i learned in college because i had an entrepreneurship degree so i was i think I, in that way i was a little lucky because i knew that but someone right. who hasn't done that they wouldn't probably know that like, you know where do i do how do i price my products you know how do i figure out shipping what companies can i use to ship my products you know where can i buy raw materials because there's something people in the small business community don't want to share it's very hush hush you know other small business owners don't want to share you know where they get their stuff from so i think if you have like a collective resource on you know this 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 you know you can try you can start from here and that would have been a little helpful for me right so uh, fair point like as you mentioned a lot of lot of uh, companies would just mention it as trade secret and not share it per yeah. se and then from there trying to understand and yeah. trying and to and a lot of people don't have the privilege to do this trial and error because i had this extra funding because you know uh, i come from a middle class background you know parents are there to support and i had like an internship so i self funded it you know my my partner my he also helped key funded it so you know while that mistakes mistakes cost a lot and like at sometimes because you don't have the finances you might just stop there because you're like i cannot right. fund this project anymore so i think just ma- making sure that you know people sort of start in the right direction instead of making these unnecessary mistakes that i think is very important right so uh, so you you mean to say that um, mistakes at 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 time can be either a blocker or a dead end yeah yeah and yeah. And, and 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 in both of the cases mistakes are not good so i think yeah. that is where you have even pride circle has if it has... can be avoided you don't have to make it that's that's where absolutely it. absolutely yeah. so if it can be avoided i mean that's that's why pride circle kind of steps in and pride circle uh, has several programs like uh, we we have seller assistance program where we kind of uh help sellers understand that what are the documents that's needed what are the documents that's needed not needed if they want to get a particular document done we connect them to the pool of resources and try to help them out that way just just basically connecting dots yes. um so with with, with that uh, pujita how had your experience been um in terms of terms of starting your business like um do you think such programs will be beneficial for the sellers yes definitely uh mentorship would be very helpful for any young entrepreneur because we just started and someone who is already experienced in this industry and a maybe mentor us in a similar like okay like maybe they have done that mistake and they have learned it as alaksha said that okay if it's unavoidable it's better to get help right because yeah i have been very confused about to continue this business or take up a job i have applied for few jobs and you know, and i yeah and i just uh, was very confused state that okay is this sustainable or should i need a job as well to support my business right and yeah you know, uh, that was very confusing but i decided to pursue and uh, the business and uh, Uh, yeah i am also privileged enough to have funding from my family and my sister to right so in like okay i'm grateful i'm very grateful to have funding without uh and supporting my business not taking up a job and investing yes. my whole energy here right mm. uh yeah definitely a mentor would be a great help or yeah i wouldn't say like uh i need if you are if you have a innovative idea which can solve a problem you definitely need grant and grants and funding for that and you know, as a retail business i don't think i deserve like i need that kind of funding in a very yeah. 
I think right. funding, as in funding, can be used for something revolutionary that can help yeah. like a lot more people, like a bigger mm-hmm. innovation. I think, as someone from the arts and crafts, I would like sort of describe what we both do in the field of arts and crafts. So I think like that wouldn't need like funding, but like yeah, this mentoring and like just resources would would be amazing. Yeah. Right. So you mean to say that uh, uh, in 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 smaller businesses where the scale is not too high, yeah. the mm-hmm. investment requirement is not that high, and somebody can yeah. use their little savings and then start something. Fair enough. I think uh, people here who are listening to this right now, they might be thinking that oh, but in order to start a business, we need a hefty hefty uh, fund or something. But it's not like that. Depending on what scale of business you are willing to start, your funding depends. however even a small bun, uh, f- small uh, bunch of fund can help you start something that you are aspiring to start with that um uh, uh, i think i would want to just understand something else from you and that's that's like um, right now um what sort of help or what sort of understanding would you would you think uh, corporates or the society should give in order to support queer businesses what do you think societies or corporates role is Laksha, if you want to start. Okay. So I think as society, or uh, I would say more than society, I think like you know, uh, people who have like you know a larger following, or you know, uh, bigger corporates, uh, just be like a bigger organizations in general. I think have like you know a fundamental responsibility to you know, uh, you know, be uh, you know, uh, you know, taking queer people into their organizations and use them to be their voice. You know, to educate the people in these organizations and talk to them about the queer community and how they can be you know mindful and respectful about every queer person's identity. I think that's where they can start. Um, you know, support the queer community. Coming to the queers, uh, you know, businesses. I would say that you know, you don't have to you know shop from every queer small business. It's okay. I mean, like at the end of the day, uh, you know, overconsumption is not a good thing. So you know, it, by what supporting is for free. I mean, you can share their stuff. You can tell like ten friends about it, and one of them will buy it. So, or you can share them on your social media and, like, you know, give them that reach, give them that push. You know, use your audience and, like, you know, tell them, you know, this queer business does does this, and this queer business does that. Just give them this extra push that they need, and I think that would that would, like, you know, help. In my opinion, would you take that? Right, right. I Fair agree. enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Would you take your your thoughts? I do everything Laksha just said, and yeah, also corporate and society creating. a no like a queer friendly zone and safe place would also help a lot because and not just on pride month throughout mm. the year i think like yeah. there's no straight month where you know straight people get special privileges and after that you know it's it's not that it should be like everybody's equal at the end of mm. the day nobody should be like you know treated differently because of their identity everybody is one we're all just humans at the end of the day trying to get through life so yeah right <laughs> and so you Yeah. So you, what I understand is that you're, what you're trying to say is that uh, people shouldn't only plaster rainbow everywhere during yeah, the Pride Month, that's, that's but also <laughs> take effective, necessary, yeah. and required steps throughout the year. Yeah. Like yes. not not just uh, rainbow bashing only yeah. uh, during uh, the Pride Month. Yeah. People are in corporates all year round, right? Yeah. So employers deserve <laughs> respect and recognition every yeah. year. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, fair points, fair points. With that last tiny little bit before we wrap this for today, is that uh, what's what's your take uh, in Go Local and Make in India? I know both of you are making your products here in India, so you're truly supporting Make in India. What is your message to people out there? Or how do you think people should support Make in India and uh, go vocal for local initiatives? Uh, I may start. So, globally, uh, Indian manufacturing is considered as a not very good quality products, right? Like right. many are like, uh, but when it comes to uh, stationery or socks and t-shirts, something like that. But there are many resources. We just need to uh, help the manufacturer as well, right? so we as designers we can and they are they have all equipment to manufacture them we just need few 
designs and ideas which can go globally and create a local economy like a very good local economy and yeah i really stand for make in india because we have so many resources and it's all just online uh, if you can research about if you are looking for local locally made socks you need to research for a bit and it's very time consuming and visibility to right indian manufacturers right. don't have a uh, visibility as compared to china or other manufacturing hubs and right. yeah but there are definitely few websites which you can go through and connect with the manufacturer and in my experience i always uh, been very happy with the quality and the service right so so what i understand is that you're trying to say that uh, uh the world out there do not really consider india to be manufacturing good quality products but whereas that's that's not true that's that's a myth and i think that is where even the corporates and the society has to play a vital role and especially the corporates because they are the ones uh, who yeah. are going to preach this to the outside world that yes indian products are good and when we have several uh voices voicing out go vocal for local and uh, make in india i think we should all try to surf for that so with that we have come to an end uh, of this conversation it was lovely uh, understanding and knowing both of your initiatives sasit stickers and control plus p they are really great initiatives um thank you so much for joining in